My review of this Beta FPV Express LRS module has generated a little bit of controversy. Uh, and so, as I always do, when I need some time to reflect, I have retreated to the corner with my, with my drawers. Stare into the drawers. S stare into your soul. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to address a, a criticism of this module that someone else made that I did not touch on in my video. And the criticism is that the actual the RF uh, IC, the actual circuitry that generates the radio signal, including like the amplifier and so forth, in this module is on the back side of the board, not getting blown on by the fan. And the question is, can the module really output 500 milliwatts as claimed for an extended period of time? Well, as you can see from the fact that I've got my uh, Immersion RC RF power meter hooked up here, uh, I did a test and I have an answer for you. And the answer is that, first of all, the output power on this module, at least according to this meter, which is not a lab-grade piece of equipment, but just sort of roughly ballparks it, the output power from this is uh, basically correct, all the way from 10 milliwatts up to about 500 milliwatts. Uh, when you set it to 500 milliwatts, at the very beginning it outputs around 490, 480 milliwatts, which again, given the, given the inherent accuracy of this device, is essentially correct. And then as I let it run, I let it run for about 45 minutes, it slowly drifted down to about 440 milliwatts over the course of the first 20 minutes and then stayed at 440 milliwatts for another 20 or 25 minutes. And at that point, I concluded that it had reached thermal equilibrium and was done. So every device like this is going to reduce its output power as it heats up. So you can decide for yourself whether you feel that they, this is defective or whether it's good enough. You can decide for yourself. I'll just give you the information. What was the other thing I was going to talk about? As long as we're talking about this module again, I would like to address some of the other responses to my video, and one of them was people saying that this button, the issue that where when you enter the menu, it fail safes. They were like, well, when are you going to do that? And I can't believe that so many people are so willing to defend such a weird decision on the part of the developers, even if the decision maybe doesn't have any practical impact. Now, it is, in fact, the case that some people will access their module while they're flying. People who do long-range flight, people who have autonomous aircraft that are able to fly without you managing. They're doing a waypoint mission. Let's say you're doing a waypoint mission or a long-range flight, and you've got autopilot enabled, and your, your, your signal is getting weak, so you just flip it over and you change it. Yes, absolutely, that is a thing that people do. Not a lot of people, but it is a thing that people do. But more fundamentally, it's just such a weird thing. Why would a control um, a module manufacturer ever intentionally fail safe why why would they do that you don't have to do that to change power when you change power using the lewis script you don't fail safe i don't think so i guess i should check that but so it's just such a weird decision and it just sort of calls into question the entire mindset of the people designing the module and makes you say what else did they do that I don't know about that is equally weird and dumb? That's why. Plus, as other people pointed out, well, you could just you could bump it with your knee. Someone weighed in in the comments and said, I design user interfaces for a living, and trust me, users will do the dumbest shit that you don't expect with your user interface. Somebody's just going to be fiddling with their fingers on the back of their radio and push that button as a fidget toy. It shouldn't cause a failsafe to go into the menu. That's just... I don't know why so many people are so eager to defend that and criticize my criticism. I'm just trying to make the product better. Well, I think people should be on my side on this one, but hey, that's the beauty of the YouTube comments section is people are always 100% on your side and never against you for dumb reasons. Um, the final thing about this that I want to point out as long as I have your attention one more time is, as I said in the video, these issues will get fixed in firmware, none of them are absolute deal breakers. And if you really want to, you can flash this module today 
with ExpressLRS 2.0 release candidate, or if it's 2.0 has come out at the time that you're watching it, the OLED and the joystick will stop functioning. And actually, uh, one of the developers said, actually, the OLED will keep working, just you won't be able to access the menu options with the joystick. And since that's the part that's kind of messed up anyway, this is still a fine module that seems to perform reasonably well. At least the one that I have seems to perform reasonably well. And if you put the standard firmware on it, it may be a good choice. Why did I call this a problem with the Express LRS project and not a problem with Beta FPV's manufacturing? I get it. I get that, that question. Um, for example, Beta F, uh, Beta Flight, Beta Flight flight controllers, some of them are good, some of them are bad. I talked about this in the video, but I never made a video that said Beta Flight has a problem. And here's why. Because Beta Flight is established. They are the leading go-to choice. They are the de facto choice. Sorry, KISS. Sorry, Flight 1. Beta Flight is just what the vast majority of FPV, acro, freestyle racing pilots are going to choose. And so, if someone buys a Beta Flight flight controller and it's crappy, they're just going to look around and see that 90% of other people, whatever percent, are using Beta Flight and go, ah, I guess this is the odd one out. But Express LRS is the underdog here. Express LRS is the new kid on the block. And as such, Express LRS has a much more uh, tenuous chance of hooking a new user. If someone buys a Beta FPV Express LRS module and it is crappy, I think that they are more likely to go, this Express LRS thing is for the dogs, and or the birds, whatever, and just give up and go back to Crossfire. So, that's why I call this a problem for Express LRS, but bad beta flight flight controllers are not a problem for beta flight in the same way. And if the day comes that Express LRS is widely accepted and there are tons and tons of Express LRS modules out there and that, that perception image isn't a thing, then the message would be different. But at least as of today, that's how I see it. Um, okay, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.